Lucky it's Lefty it's Podcast. It's Happy it's Friday, it's everybody. It's been a couple of days. Your boy's been at South Bend. That's right. Hard. Man, shout out to uh, Notre Dame, the entire coaching staff, support staff. Man, really good time. I enjoyed myself at practice. I enjoyed myself at the pro day. We're back in business left. Lucky Lucky Podcast, the Nora Boys in the building. Brought to you by Nora Whiskey, norawhiskey.com. It's that premium American whiskey at norawhiskey.com. And if you drink, by all means, make sure you do so. Respond. You got to do some sports betting. We also got some sports betting coming our way. Yes, sir. Hot and fast and ready. We're going to, we, it's March Madness time, you know. By the way, Sean, the Final Four is in Arizona. So it ain't too late to book a ticket. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. I, I like that. I like Illinois making it to Arizona. I like that. I like that. You know, we, we big win for us first round. And then on Saturday, we get to take on the fighting uh LeBrons <laughs> from Duquesne. You know, with their new LeBron shoes. Uh, they can go right home and wear them on the streets after Saturday. Oh, okay. So you say you no put no bed. You put no problem. Bed. <laughs> yeah, they can go right home. No problem. I mean, you don't see how the tournament can be crazy already. Ninety-eight percent of people's brackets are trashed already. Day one. Yeah. Day one, game one. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Man, so I can't wait to talk about this pro day. I can't wait to talk about the practice. I did have a practice report up on the YouTube channel. If you missed it, subscribe. Hit the like button. Make sure you let everybody know Lucky Lucky Podcast, home of the misguided passion, continues to spin a different left. And on my phone, my notifications were going up. So I'm going to go ahead early and just put Kendrick Lamar on the petty train. I'm just going ahead and do it. That's right. Let's put him on the petty train early, along with some others we got coming. But you saying that's petty? Yeah, it, it was petty. Anytime rap, or rap, is it? It's petty. I think it's real rap. That's, that's real rap. That's what you. That's what you want from the from the culture that's been so, you know. Yeah, that's the. I've been waiting for somebody that's that's real rap to do it. <laughs> that's my point. <laughs> And see, yeah, we got look, a bunch of songwriters. Look, dude, look, Cole, Cole ain't about that, dude. Cole can come back with some nice little one-liners and some good lyrics. Cole can spit, but Cole ain't about yeah. that. Too. Cole really don't have no. Cole ain't got no issues with nobody, dude. What? He, he had is. issues with NBA Young Boy. He had issues with at one Once point again. Drake. <laughs> no, dude, Cole ain't got no real issues. Tell me a real lyricist that Cole has a beef with. Oh, lyricist? Nobody. because he. That's he my point. Guy. Then what are we really talking about? That's not beef. Well, beef with Nas rappers. versus Jay. Nas versus Jay was beef. Wu-Tang yes. versus Biggie was beef. That's lyrical beef. <laughs> this is so you saying if it ain't lyrical on both sides, it's not beef? No, nah, this is entertainment. NBA young boy is not. What is he going to come come back and cold with what some hard bars you know about what how are you gonna shoot this and shoot that what what yeah, are you gonna say that he gonna shoot this shoot that come to grave digging mountain and all that you know come on man but well, well oh that's it uh j cole got beef with puff they got into a scuffle really you mean the same dude that smacked drake <laughs> what are we... <laughs> now they said Drake dodged it. They said Drake dodged it. Oh sure, sure he dodged. But he, it. But, yeah. but but Puff definitely smacked J Cole one hundred percent. So basically, two of the three that was supposed to be the big three have <laughs> have reportedly been assaulted by Puffy. That that's what you're telling me. <laughs> Not Kendrick. I don't think Kendrick been assaulted by Puff. No, Puff don't want to deal. He don't want to deal with that West Coast East Coast stuff no more, dog. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's retired. That TDE, he don't, he doesn't want anything with that TDE crew. I can promise you that. Lucky Lefty podcast, pro day yesterday. Uh, can I just give you my synopsis? Shout out to our boy CJ Pro As soon as I walked in the door, I saw him. Uh, so, oh, he was there. Yeah, yeah, he was there to support Aldrich. He was on the field where Aldrich was running his drills. Um, 
And just, you know, yeah, just being a, a former Notre Dame player supporting. Um, oh, I, I did want to ask, how did Jaden Greathouse get in there? That's you know, I was asking the question because I didn't know if under I didn't know if undergrads could actually participate in pro days. Right. That's right? never been a thing. So when he um Sam said that Jaden, both Jadens were late additions. Jaden Harrison and Jaden Greathouse, wide receivers from this year's roster. And uh Sam was just like, yo, they came at the last minute and said they wanted to be a part of it. You can do that. Hey, I guess rude. <laughs> no, I, I never knew because Sam came in and threw for Michael Mayer last year. But Sam was a grad transfer. Yeah, Jaden's a sophomore. Right. So, no, I. Well, I mean, they got some. Some scouts had to take a note or two. I'm sure. Man, I uh. Mm. I can't explain that one. Man. So I walk in and I walk in. They started at 1015. I got there at 1030 local time. They were doing the bench press. So I walk in, I see CJ speak to him. Um it was it was a mausoleum up in there, bro. Oh, super clean and all the. It was just, it, it was dead, bro. It was just real Damn. quiet. It was just quiet. It was just quiet. And the scouts were talking to each other. Does every scout wear Nike dunks? I swear, every scout, except for the older guys, had on Nike dunks. That's I'm the like, shoe of choice, huh? I'm like, is this the official shoe of choice for NFL scouts? I'm like, yo, this, I'm, dude, black, nude. Red, navy. Oh, they had the colorways. It was just all dunks. All dunks. Wow. I was like, wow. What was your shoe of choice? Because I know you had something fresh on. I had on my black panda dunks. <laughs> That's why it was funny. I had on my black low panda dunk. <laughs> you go over there, they matching you, Sean. <laughs> I know. I know. It was crazy. So I step up, and the broad jump is when – now, this is the first buzz moment. The first buzz moment, because you had guys like Paul Moala, Joe Wilkins, Avery Davis, and some other former Notre Dame players that came back to participate in their pro days there, which is smart. It's a bigger platform than, say, Paul Moala doing it at uh, Georgia Tech. Yeah. That's smart, smart for him to come to the Notre Dame pro day. But hell, did we have a bunch of scouts? Because I feel like we have a, a bunch of mid round guys this year. The only head coach I saw was Dan Quinn from the command. Mm. The commander's entire but you staff know, that. you know who he asking about. He ain't even talking though today. He talking he talking Dude. to Denbrock. <laughs> so I'll get to that in a second. The first buzz moment where things kind of start to pick up. Let me tell you how quiet it was. I was sitting on the bleachers and was literally like bobbing my head to the music for like 30 minutes. No chat. I mean, I'm, you know, head nodding the cats, you know, and I'm just bobbing to the music. It was that quiet that you could hear the music, which wasn't being played loud. You could hear the music clear. I'm sitting wow. over there bobbing my head like, uh, now, now, in fairness, the Notre Dame indoor is really nice and big, you know, so the sound probably travels real well in there. Uh, we, we can sound, I'm talking about energy, bro. Like the energy uh, is just, uh, yeah, energy is just low. And the first buzz moment comes, they're doing a broad jump, and Thomas Harper steps up. I mean, the energy is uh, Sam Hartman vibe, I think, because Sam is just super laid back, Captain America, Dove commercial, slow-mo. Everything they do in a fight film is a slow-mo so they can look at his hair. <laughs> Man, look. 
that was the least, that was one of the most non sequential man. That was one of the most, that was one of the least pertinent quarterback workouts I've ever seen at a pro day. Oh my gosh. And we I mean, have to realize really some, some bad reviews. <laughs> when Sam Hartman was throwing, left when Sam Hartman was throwing, they were doing player interviews as mm. well. I'll yeah, just he, say he, this. He it was moving a, the needle. He it was a lot. It was a lot of cameras around the player interviews, bro. I'll leave it <laughs> that. That's, now that's maybe that was the wrong time to start the player interviews, but you know. the cameras was the, the, the camera lens was behind Sam, not yeah. not, Man, not, not on Sam. He is who he is. Listen, but those are the guys he knows. He's gonna sneak in. Fourth, fifth round, maybe fifth, sixth round. They gonna like him in the office. You know how that go. They gonna think the brother, the brother cool or whatever. And now he's playing for, the, you know, the Commanders in in week eighteen or something. Mm-hmm. So Thomas Harper goes 10-8 in the broad jump, and all of a sudden oh. you hear you hear everybody say, "Ooh, that was like the first buzz moment." Okay. That was the first buzz moment because you could even tell we could watch, we could tell from the angle, like, oh man, that was okay. That he was, got out. That was, yeah, that was nice. And then you heard the buzz, like, ooh, because some of the players were upstairs. We were downstairs on field level, players, parents, because the the weekend, I got another story to tell you about how lame some media cats are. <laughs> It's just man, I just don't understand. Indie how... media, indie no, 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 no. Indie media was really cool yesterday. Like we all were fraternizing, like at some point, head nodding. You know, got introduced to some new guys on the beat over at the Irish Tribune, which was really nice. Some younger cats. It was really man. It was a really good time. And, you know, we had, we had just seen each other Wednesday. You know, right. after practice. But so practice. Yeah, but you know. I was kind of embarrassed being a Chicagoan. I will get to it. <laughs> Not the Chicago Tribune messing oh, up. No, oh, dude. Just cornballs, man. So uh, yesterday was the start of a busy uh, recruiting weekend. Like, you know, Deuce got in Thursday, I mean, uh, Wednesday night. Yep. He said he got in at 11 or something. He got in at 11 Wednesday night. And, you know, so the coaches start funneling in a little bit later. Right, because you know, they're with the recruits. Dylan McCullough was really um, the only coach that was there early, and that's because he was he was responsible for Aldrich's workout. And so the first oh, buzz wow. moment, first buzz moment is Thomas Harper's broad. And, Wait, uh, did uh did uh did Aldrich train at Notre Dame? Because Dina was working his workout, or that's just like on the spot kind of. I'm thing. I'm not do I'm not sure. Aldrich's whole point was he wasn't comfortable, really comfortable at the combine, and he was just happy to be back in his comfort place, place of comfort. <laughs> we could have told him not to go at all. I mean, hell, it's that's not his strong suit. So Thomas Harper does that, and then right after they do the broad jump. 40 yard dash is up. And that's when, that's what I'm saying. Like now all the scouts start to converge, right? Because up until then, the scouts are spread out over and they want scouts over here in the corner, teams over here in the other corner, talking. Some are paying attention to the broad jump, some aren't. You know what I'm saying? It was like, and Aldrich stepped up to the fourth. And that's when the energy picked up. You could just feel it. Like, this is what everybody came for. Like that, it was yeah, the they, moment. They had to see, yeah, they had to see. It, it was the moment. Four seven, yeah, that's right. And everybody was like, "Yo!" So I pull out my stopwatch, and so I pull out my stopwatch, and so he takes off. I hit it. He crosses the forty yard line, and I look down at my stopwatch, and I'm like, "So I'm standing next to Mike Bernardini." And I almost wanted to say, yo, what did you get? Because I couldn't believe what I had on my stopwatch. 
Like you thought you was quick trigger. Yeah, I'm thinking I had a real quick trigger because I'm like, yo. Because <laughs> I had four, five, six on my stopwatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, that's a that's a huge jump though, considering he had a full seven. Four something. seven, right? Yeah. That's why I'm like, man, I had to mess up. <laughs> I had to mess up. So I gave myself plus uh, two hundred. And that's exactly what he got. That's and exactly I, that I text, spot on. I text everybody. I text uh, you, be Drisk, everybody. I was like, yo, all you just ran four, five, eight. I had four, five, six, but I said, yo, I'll say four, five, eight. Yeah, because that's, that's, man, that's a big jump. <laughs> right. But then the official comes out and they're like, yeah, four, five, eight. And I'm like, Ooh, oh, snap. you might find a new career. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, oh, snap, I was on it. So then everything picked up, right? Then Thomas Harper runs like a 448. And it's like, okay. Oh, he was fast. Uh, yeah, that dude had a 42 inch vert, too. Oh, he an athlete? No, this is the thing. So I'm talking <laughs> to Ryan Roberts, like, man, I, I didn't see that athlete on the field this year. Like, definitely did. 10 inch broad inch jump. vertical. 42 inch vertical? 448? Yeah. That's a player. Right. That's a first round <laughs> pick. I'm like, yo. That's, that's how you know. It's like Aldrich runs a 47 and, and Thomas Harper jumps a 42, and they're two different players on the field. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So then Thomas Harper runs his, right? Your boy DJ Brown had a rough day, bro. Yeah. I was I pulling for DJ. I was pulling for DJ, man. But let me tell you something about he DJ. He probably ran bro. like a full seven or something like that. It's like a four. He just had a rough day, bro. Yeah. He's not a combine guy either, though. JD, uh, tore his plantar fasciitis the first day at the senior bowl. Oh yeah, he's done till like damn near. That's why he year. didn't yeah, that's why he didn't participate. That's why he didn't participate. He did yeah, on the, the first day? The very first day and they told him he couldn't make it worse, so he just practiced the rest of the week. Okay. With a torn plantar. And then yeah. got it taken care of after he left. So you know, he talked about that. DJ had 19 reps on the weight bench. Um, vertical jump 33. Vertical jump 33. Broad jump was only 9-1. Nine, 9-1? One. Nine, one? Nine, one, fam. No way it was a 9-1. He must yeah, have. He, he all the way had to have slipped or like... No, like, sir. I've never heard no shit like that. Nine one? No, sir. He probably thought it was a vertical and didn't get out for I just find it hard to believe it was a nine one. They probably nine, don't one. even record nines. Lyman damn near don't even get nines. That that man had wow. a that man, that man had a four seven and a forty. And a four three seven twenty uh third twenty yard shuttle. Oh hell no, not the four three seven shuttle. Yeah, bro. It was, oh, it, it was a tough day. day. It was a tough day. And I sat there and I was talking to Sean Styers and I was like, yo, for the production Somebody they got out of him. Tell him to stop. Yeah. For the production they got out of him, they Notre Dame coached the coast to hell out of DJ Brown. They got every ounce. Because DJ Brown played aggressive, decent. they put him he in played, position. They put him in position and coached his tip. Man, look, I'm sitting here saying this is what development looks like. Yeah, dude. Outside of the vacuum, Chris, o Chris O'Leary was coaching his butt off, and Al Golden was call calling defenses with his dude. Al Golden has a lot. 
<laughs> Al Golden has a lot more talent on the field this year. Just raw talent. Oh, oh yeah, we don't got no four seven in the back end this year. Man. Now this is the thing. This is what I want to point out about the pro day. Shout out to Ryan Roberts because this is something we talked about yesterday. Avery Davis ran a four five six. 437 shuttle and a 7.093 cone. 35 inch vertical. Joe Wilkins ran a 468 4.21 shuttle and a 6753 cone. Okay, three cone not too bad. Three cone not too bad. Left. I just want you to know that at one point, Joe Wilkins, go back to the last time Mike Denbrock came to Notre Dame Stadium when uh, he was the OC at uh, Cincinnati. Joe Wilkins was a starting receiver, bro. Avery Davis was in the slot. Notre Dame fans, y'all complain about high school sophomores and juniors running four or fives. Y'all starting receivers. Just two years ago, that Jack Cone was throwing two ran four seven and four darn near four six. Mm. I just want to point that hey, out, man. And we're hey, sitting we, up here hey, complaining hey, about Notre Dame recruiting guys that run four 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 five. Yeah, and then and we got Chris Mitchell saying juniors. it's disrespectful to say I'm a four four. Yeah. <laughs> so he said them Joe Wilkin numbers, they're out of here. Get out of here. He said, listen, I'm running faster than that. And y'all, y'all, y'all giving me credit that ain't even good enough. Y'all ain't giving me enough credit. Can I tell you something we uh the, the old folks used to say in the house of the Lord left? <laughs> yeah. When the spirit got high and they would testify left, they would say, I'm not what I'm supposed to be, but thank God I ain't what I used to be. That's right. And why y'all why are we sitting up here complaining? About these 25 and 26 offers, the wide receiver. You better be thankful that you're not what you used to be in that wide receiver room. Wow. This is a whole lot better. A whole lot better. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a well, whole lot better. What, Chris, that would mean Chris Tyree was our fastest receiver two years ago. Mm-hmm. And he's like a four or five probably right now. Man, look here, bro. Yesterday, wow, and then I started getting excited about next year's pro day because I was thinking about all the guys that are going to be at the pro day next year. And I'm like, Ben Morrison, Chris Mitchell, yeah, we got some speed. Going. Ben Morrison, Chris Mitchell, Xavier Watts, Riley Mills, Howard Cross, and yeah. Riley Leonard, if he has a new a new year, a good year. Uh, R.J. Oban is going to be a senior. It's definitely going to be a different vibe next year. Definitely going to be a different vibe. But for me, left, it is um, the commander spent 15 minutes, the entire coaching staff, talking to Dela McCullough. I think it's very apparent that they were very interested in Audrey Estimate. Audrey Estimate, dude, he might as well have dropped the mic yesterday. As I said before, Dylan McCullough ran his uh his drills, his field drills. This man ran the four five. First of all, he ran four five eight twice. Oh, he Wasn't did like back he ran. Yeah, he ran four five eight both times. Wow, both times when he ran the first four five eight, you heard cats like, Oh, like you heard the collective oh coming from the scouts, like because you could tell he was fast, you could tell, and I could see scouts looking around like, Man, is there an escalator or something like a escalator he's running on on this grass? Like, no, nah, bro. He was running like a football player instead of trying to run like a track star at the combine. Yeah, he was probably he was thinking like, about technique at the combine. Yeah, man, just do. Just run. 
Just run. Just run. <laughs> run, bro. Run like you would if you had the ball and Casper chasing you. Just run. That's all it is because he's a better football player than a track athlete for sure. And so then he went to the field drill. What have I been saying about the first thing I saw when Aldrich was a freshman? I hit y'all like it's no reason this dude that he has to, to quick be, feet and he has the best feet. feet to be this big this dude has really good feet went to the field drills and dealer mccullough made him look spectacular coast him through everything all right this is what you need to do this is what you need to show look great quickness shifty uh cj and uh dealer mccullough's son well you know you know the guys that stand by the garbage can. The safety or the or the running back. They were the linebackers in the drill. They were the linebackers yeah. in the drill. Aldrich was breaking through the hole, cutting left, cutting right. Sometimes he was spinning left, right. Ooh, accelerating. He was yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, okay. He had to. He brought out the the the, the bag. So then the last, the last, um, the last time he did the drill, he came through and just hurdled. Both of the garbage cans. I was like, oh, this dude's showing out now. And when he did the hurdle, you heard the scouts he go. Hurt. He hurdled the garbage can. I said, yep. But he, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> shocking to left. We've seen him hurdle people in games. So it's not a shock to us. <laughs> he hurdled the trash can in the drill. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, that's different. You know, that's different. I like it. But, you know, scouts were like, oh, now the first team to walk up to him after his workout on field was was the, the beloved. No, nah, it was the beloved. The first. Oh, the Bears? The Bears were the first team, as soon as he was done, to walk up to him and say, hey, you know, we'll be, we'll be hollering at you, Dub. That's right. We're gonna, We're gonna holler at you. He looked like a Chicago running back. I ain't gonna lie. He looked now, like a little hey, hey, hey. Now the Bears were down there for one reason yesterday. Now Aldrick was like the dessert. <laughs> yeah. Aldrick was the dessert. <laughs> Aldrick was the dessert. Oh, but the main but course. Was was the cake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Was the cake. yeah. <laughs> So, hey, let me, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something, man. I don't give a darn about Caleb <laughs> Williams. I don't give a darn about Caleb Williams. Okay, that's right. If, if the Bears take Joe Alden, Aldrich estimate, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I might go see my first Bears game in person. <laughs> I might just go see my first Chicago Bears game in person. You were supposed might... to go with Sam Mustafer was starting, man. No sir, no sir, <laughs> no sir. Love Sam. He man, he. He exceeded expectations. He started for two years for the Bears. I didn't even expect That's that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he tried to expect that. No, I didn't expect that. You, te you terrible shot. <laughs> no, 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 no. And the Bears, that do. they gave Sam, uh, Sam Muster for a chance. Heck, they brought Harry right. Houston from Notre Dame to be the offensive line coach. Heck, even on top of that, um, who did they man? Oh man, skip man. They drafted my man that started for Notre Dame two years ago. He was injured. He injured himself in his senior year. They oh, drafted Alex him. Bars. Alex Barr. Yes, thank you, love. Yo, they do. They obviously love Notre Dame offensive line. Obviously. I mean, Aldrich's a great fit in Chicago. They got AJ Dillon at the Packers. They got some heavyweights in that division. So no, I mean With the, the Packers have the fan uh, base. The Packers have Josh Jacobs too, dog. I mean, oh, that's right. They don't don't forget that. They ain't just got AJ <laughs> Dillon. They got Josh Jacobs too. While, while Chicago fans are sitting up here clapping like the, the Packers didn't get that. But no. Man, look. I don't even forget Caleb Williams. Just take Aldrich and, and, and Joe Alt. Oh, man, I'm stacking. Joe you think Aldrich's a, a third rounder, fourth rounder? He, we talked about. It. He, I think he worked himself into a second day draft. Wow. His okay. Yeah. 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 I think third, yeah. mid third, mid third is start to talk, start to watch, especially a team that has multiple thirds. Yep. 
he'll be a probably nice use combo that late third pick. on him. It'll be a nice combo pick if you can get two in the third round or something like that. Mm-hmm. But Joe Hart's going going top round, top five. Mm. It looked like Blake Fisher was moving good himself, though. Blake had a – see, the mistake was Blake worked out next to Joe Hart. Oh, you know, yeah, okay. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, he, you know, he, he, the girl – look better doing it. That's right. The girl in the group of friends that's really cool, the coolest of the group, but she's just not as pretty as the other ones. Yeah, but she's like and, she like looks good with them. No, 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 no. It's the opposite. Like mm. when you when you go, man. If y'all just go out and kick it, like oh man, we out kick. Like oh man, you start to notice. Like man, you know what she like. Like I knew yeah, she was yeah, a okay. dope person, but like she, <laughs> she's dressed up. Man, she man, she looking up. Yeah, she all right. That's right. Yeah, then a girl show up and you like all of a sudden uh, you don't, you don't yeah. talk to her for the rest of the night. <laughs> all of a sudden everybody else got your attention. It's right. Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> that's that's Joe Alt working out next to Blake Fisher, bro. Okay, so it was good until Joe showed up. It was all man. <laughs> that cat Joe was just so smooth and athletic. Blake just did. Blake looked more like the lineman. At that point, yeah, man. Uh, but let me tell you the blessing, though. There was, dude. There had to be about seven. The Seahawks were really engaged with Blake. Okay. Their O line coach was coaching Blake, like after every rep. Oh, like he the, likes him. Yes, this is the good thing I saw with Blake Fisher. He takes the coaching really well because they would tell him to do something. And the very next rep, he would do it. Oh, okay. That's all that matters oh, right there. That gets he's stressed. really smart. Really smart. He's just, there's nothing he can do about flexibility, being. I mean, he is who he is physically. Okay, so that Joe's just moving all fluid. Oh, Blake's a God, little more dude. sturdy in the in the ground. Yeah. They had a drill what they had where they had to pull from the left and the right, turn the corner run the hoop and grab the tennis ball bend down grab the tennis ball man joe was doing this so effortless it was like yo this is incredible oh like he like he was over there like it was clockwork like it was oh okay he just oh yeah go ahead good just go ahead and show off real quick yeah flat out it was just <laughs> this is easy this is easy on the other hand you had blake who Getting around the corner for him wasn't as smooth. And bending down to get the tennis ball. Like, he went down and got it. You know, Blake's injury, honestly, was a blessing in disguise. For him to get injured his first game, the first series against Florida State as a starting left tackle. Mind you, he beat out Joe Alt for the left tackle position. But it was a blessing in disguise because Joe Alt ended up cementing himself, and then you had your right tap. That's right. For the, you had so you had your bookends, and it ended up being a blessing for Notre Dame. I know people would like Blake Fisher to have performed better, and I think one of the things see Blake Fisher, uh, people were like, "Yeah, I think he made a mistake." I'm like, "Dog, why do y'all keep saying that?" A mistake you know what I love? Out? Yeah. You know what I love? I love people that recognize who they are. Yeah. Blake Fisher recognizes who he is. Like people, he can come back and get better and be what? Blake Fisher isn't a first round tackle. He's just not a first round tackle. Yeah. He's not. You just look at you look at what he showed yesterday. He he can't improve. Maybe he can get stronger. Maybe his footwork can get a little bit better, but he is who he hey. is as an athlete, man. He the the flexibility he doesn't he's not as flexible and smooth as a Joe All. He recognizes that. He's had three That's coaches in three yeah, seasons. It's like, yo, it's time for me to go. Smart kid, all scheduled to graduate. It's time. I know who I am. 
I'm gonna be a third, fourth round pick. Yeah, I would love him to come back and be the right tackle with Charles Jagasaw on the other side and left tackle. Yeah, I would love that. But hey. And you got to think, Blake Fisher is playing the numbers. He's going to go into the draft, maybe not be Joe Alt's level, but he's still an elite guy compared to the other tackles in the group. Left, he is a Notre Dame offensive lineman. Yeah. Sam Mustafer was a starter for two years in the NFL and is still on the NFL roster, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, he's still in Chicago? No, I think he's with the Ravens now mm. as a backup. But my point is Notre Dame offensive linemen are prepared for the for the NFL, man. Aaron Banks, nobody thought Aaron Banks was going to end up having the, the career he had. He was getting the same type of people like Aaron Banks needs to come back. Aaron Banks has been a starter for one of the most dominant yeah, offensive Carr. line units ever. Yes. Robert Haney the same way. Yes. Hell, Liam Eikenberg was 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 quoted to try to come back, and he's starting for the left tackle for Miami. Yo, Notre Dame offensive lineman. This is what I try to tell people, man. As much as people wanted to pick on Blake Fisher, I'm like, dude, Blake Fisher's ready to play in the NFL. This is what Notre Dame does. They prepare offensive linemen for the NFL versus Alabama offensive linemen that constantly get taken in the first round and end up being bust. Bust. Every time, too. Or have underwhelming NFL careers. Blake Fisher is who he is. And that's what stood out to me. I can respect someone that just says, yo, I, look, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a six and a half, seven out of ten. But I'm going to still, I'm going to work with it. I'm going to be successful. That's right. I'm not about to go get, you know, plastic surgery and try to fake it. No. Yeah, not everybody's a Joe Alt, man. That's no. what it is. No. They're not. They're not. And it was just unfortunate. If he, if Joe Alt wasn't working out, Blake Fisher probably would have looked even better. But the fact that there were several, at least six to seven coaches engaged with him during the drills, they're interested. They're like, yo, we can do something with him. We can do yeah. something with him. All you need is one team to like you now. I'm just saying it was the, the first offensive line coach to jump it off in the drills was were the Chicago Bears. I just want to point that out. Oh, like they they came, they came clipboard yeah. ready for yeah, yeah, yeah. They said, "Oh, we we're gonna be the first ones to check <laughs> to check everybody out." Yeah, we're gonna oh, make yeah. sure we we put our our flag on Joe. Yeah. So none of these other teams think they can just you know. Yeah. Just might as well cross it off your list, other teams. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Keep going early. Yeah. Yes. Like people after the Sun Bowl, people were like, "Man, we need to move Jack and Saul into guard for what? For what?" Moving the guard for what? We're averaging six eight on the line right now. It's like, man, dude, people just if people if if he if he doesn't look like Joe Alt, then it, it's time to move him. After his first collegiate start, it's already time to move him inside. Mm. It's, Hell no. it's crazy, man. It's crazy. But Thomas Harper stole the show, Joe Alt Aldrich. Best days I would go, but Joe Alt just did field drills, right? Right. And maybe everybody, maybe the scouts were like, oh my God. Yeah, I'm sitting there like, dude, this is Joe Alt. We've been watching this dude for two years. Yeah. Like Healthy. you could have, yeah, you could have called the Notre Dame media. We could have told you this is what this is what you're coming all the way to South Bend to see. Yeah, then this is what you're gonna get. He's not, you know, he's pretty consistent too. So it is what it is. The Bears just want to the show up to let everybody else know he's off yeah. the list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's gone the first three or five picks. And I think Thomas Harper might have gotten drafted yesterday. I think he was on the, the, the fringe of a late-round undrafted free agent and with the performance yesterday with pretty good he's tape. Yeah, with pretty good tape, he has a really good chance to get drafted. What turned opinion. us off on Thomas Harper early was in bouquet. 
from Ohio State. Them, them, them yeah. couple of rounds in the nickel. They, that I, was they, like the last time I wanted to see Thomas Harper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they did isolate him. Ohio State yeah. did, but but if he had a forty-two inch vert, I didn't know that. Or yes, a four-four, he would have had the big, the best vert at the combine. Oh my God! Yeah, he's yeah. getting drafted. He's yeah, getting drafted. yeah. Maris looked really good in field drills. Uh, he didn't look stiff in the hips. Man, he looked he looked pretty good to me, man. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna well, be he honest. Didn't have to, he didn't have to break nobody down. That's why. Uh, Maris, what did he do yesterday? He came in at two thirty five. Uh, he only did 16 reps on the bench. I thought he would have done more. Heck, DJ Brown did 19. DJ's stronger than he is anything else. But I thought, I, you know, I'm excited for KBA to be that Maris replacement on an athletic upgrade standpoint. And see, once again, Maris didn't run the 40. He only had a nine, um, nine foot broad jump, and he only had a vert of 30. Yeah, you know. But then you put him on the field. He's moving and like, flying around. Yeah, it's, you know, I, that's what you have to do. you trust the numbers and what you see, or do you trust the game tape? Game tape is more consistent this year than it was the previous year. Right. You know, so. Yeah. We'll see, man. But all in all, man, it was a it, the it was, yeah, bro. It it was dead up in there early. It was dead up in there early. Thomas Harper started the buzz, and then Aldrich just took it to the next level. And then from there, from the forties, it went straight to Joe Alden Blake Fisher. And pretty, <laughs> and then once the Joe Alden Blake Fisher were done, it was like okay, who what else is left? <laughs> yeah, where the play players coming over here for the interviews? Right here, y'all want us to stand right here, right here. Okay, all right. Who who's first? Sam, oh, okay. Sam trying to Sam trying to move people in the back so they can they can get out the way right. of the routes. All right, yeah. Hey guys, you know you know the wide receivers, Sam and the wide receivers are gonna be on the far end of the field. Oh, all right. But you said the players gonna be over here for interviews, right? <laughs> Player interviews are here. They hit okay. him with the all right, all right, we'll right. get down there. We'll yeah. get down there. Yeah, who's first? Who DJ? I mean JD Bertrand's first. Oh, oh, okay. Let me get this JD Bertrand. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I mean, it was there were some teams watching. But you know what else I found out yesterday? That cat Mike Denbrock is cool as hell, dude. Oh, yeah. He's just, he's just solid. Bruh, dude. this cat Mike Denbrock walks in. Yo, swag, head nodding everybody. Walked over to the media. What's up? All the scouts are walking up to him. He dapping cats. I'm like, this cat Mike Denbrock is cool as hell. I'm like, okay. I'm like, yeah, I feel real comfortable about Deuce staying locked in now. Like, if this is the OC, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, we're good. We're good. I agree because I agree because uh that's that's Denbrock's spiel. You know, he, he has a way of not trying to connect with players in, in terms of like he ain't out there all in your face. Mm -hmm. But he he got that presence of let me let me see what this dude is about. He pretty he pretty solid, you know. Yeah. So when you got a personality like that, it's a it's a gravitating one, which is why he can get the best out of his players. He got the best out of Will Fuller, the best out of Corey Robinson, the best out of Chris Brown. And hey so man, something else, man. Call your boy Corey Robinson, bro. But you know he had to call on Peacock when they went live. Man, Corey, there is no Corey must be vegan. He has to be vegan. Has to be, bro. That dude looks like he's missed some meals, bro. Oh, he uh he uh he was up there. And there is no way Corey is anywhere over 170 pounds. 
Oh, no way. Don't say that. Bruh. Okay, love. All right. Because he's like he's like 6'6". Six, six. He played. He had to play at like 190. If that. Because he was still skinny at Notre Dame. Well, he is not his playing weight. I can tell you that. Oh, he's like a lineman that was big and got skinny, but he was a skinny receiver, got skinnier. Exactly. And I'm not saying, no, I'm not, no, I'm definitely not putting that in the atmosphere because he does not look unhealthy. That's not what I'm saying. He just did. I'm just like, yo, fam. Like, you need the 15 to 20 pounds the camera puts on you. Yeah, just to, you know, fill out a little bit more. Absolutely. Absolutely, but justice, man, justice, cool, justice, gracious. Walked in, you know. He's a real to, gracious guy. That's what yeah, is. yeah, spoke to the He's media. A real gracious dude. Yeah, yeah, good dude, man, good dude. All in all, man, I'm tell you, the vibes were, man, really amazing, man. They really were, man. Like, like I said, through the course of the day, because I mean, we were there for almost four and a half hours. Throughout the course of the day, I had some type of conversation with pretty much everybody in Notre Dame meeting. I don't care if it was I don't care if it was simple as yo, what's good? Hey, yeah, what's up? Yeah. Uh Dela McCullough showed us love on the way out. We caught we locked eyes. Uh it's a couple of dudes on Notre Dame support staff that always greet me when I come in. They gotta they gotta uh they gotta send you the quarter zip. Quarter zip drip, man. I man, I need to make sure I put in a bid the next <laughs> time. Um, so we do that, and uh, they show love. Uh, Dan supports, I think he's like assistant, he's an assistant to the uh, the main guy, the main PR guy. Man, he's super cool. The rest of the staff, like I said, the support staff was fantastic. Dylan, I'm on the way out. Dylan, I lock eyes. He stops having a conversation with whoever he's talking to. Man, we dap. And he's like, yo, man, I love watching y'all, man. I really like, like what y'all do. I was like, man, I appreciate that. So that that made me feel really good, bro. That's right. For D McCullough. Oh, 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 wait, Dylan said that? Yeah, bro. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. you know. Okay. It was, man, I'm telling you, it was all in all a very fulfilling day, bro. It really was, man. It really was. A lot of Did affirmation. See, uh, Big kicking, it with, kicking it with my boy LeVon Whitaker the majority of the oh, day. Yeah. That's right. Uh, him. Uh, met uh, Sean and a couple of other young kids that just uh, got gigs over at the Irish Tribune. They introduced themselves, chopped it up with them. Man, it was like, man, it was just all love in there yesterday. It really was, man. Seeing well, CJ got, at the front uh, door. I Hanson there. Eric Hanson. I didn't see Hanson. I spoke to Tyler. Okay. Briefly, while yep, we were shooting player interviews, there. but I didn't. I didn't see Mr. Hanson yesterday. Yeah, that's our guy. Too. I did okay. not. That's our guy. Yeah, I didn't see him, man. It man. It was real cool. It was man. It was all love. It really was. Now left. No, I'll save it for the second half of the show. Anything else left? Did you see Big Gino? Oh, thank you for repeating that. Man, that cat Gino in person looks like he's about 6'6, six, six, dude. Yes, I told man, you. That, huge. Man, Gino is a big <laughs> dude. Bro. And he's not like frame big. He's no. just he, he just like, like a long dude. You're like, damn, you you big for real. Like, I can see why you recruit dudes. You induce the same size. Man, look, bro. Let me tell let me tell you something, man. I I saw him walk in, and I'll t- y'all explain like the coaches coming in, filtering in late. He was standing next to Mick, and I was like, Mick, he made Mick look like he's about five seven, bro. Yeah, he's like a he's like a tight end big, like a like a like he could go out there and you know what I mean, just fill up space. I'm trying to think. Let me see I what Gino's playing weight was. was. He his, had to have been two twenty. His playing yeah, weight at Cincinnati. Let me see what his playing weight was, bro. 2004. 
I don't even know if I can find it, bro. Let me see if they have it on sports reference. No, they just have it stats. Gino had to be an easy six five. Six five, six six two twenty. Easy, bro. Easy. Easy. Big dude, man. So I see why we're getting big quarterbacks now. Yeah, 26 offers are all big dudes. Yeah. Ryder Lions is the shortest at 26'2. Nothing under that. Nothing under 6'2. And then I, I can only expect after that is going up to 6'3. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, Gino was sick. They said people in the chat are saying he was 229 at the combine. That's a big dude, man. Yeah, I believe. And, hey, I, Gino I has you, not lost weight. I don't even like Gino, he has not lost weight. You just talked about players that lose weight, not Gino. No, that no, he Gino stayed very still solid. Built. Yeah. He holds a pretty I don't think Gino works out. <laughs> what? You think he just worked out his throwing with his quarterback? He like. Man. I think he's more like uh he put the he, you know he'll he'll do more quarterback workouts than Marcus Freeman pushing iron, you know. Well that cat Marcus Freeman definitely works out. Definitely. Man, when we come back, that's a pro day report. We come back, we'll talk about the spring practice the previous day a little bit, and we'll talk some recruiting, and I'll tell you why, man, Chicago media flat out embarrassed me yesterday. I was flat out embarrassed, bro. I was embarrassed. It left out, man. I was ashamed I knew these dudes. I'm going to keep it a buck. Lucky Lefty Podcast, man. We'll be right back. What's up, family? The merch shop is finally here. Lucky Lefty Network merch shop. We got it all. From the shirts to the hoodies to the hats to the nitty gritties. Come here right now. Shop with us. Come get the swag because you know, if anything else, we spin it different. You see the gritty. You see how we get down. It's elite. Straight up, now tell me, do you really want to love me forever? Oh, oh, oh. Or is it just a hit and run? Lucky Lefty back at it. SD two mics. Left. Mm, your left. So, man, I'm sitting there yesterday. I walk in. And uh, I see the Chicago media coming in, right? And so we're sitting on bleachers. I'm sitting in the first row, and they sit behind me. So have you ever seen uh, Jay Holiday and, and Tank's podcast? It's the it's the one where they talk about, like, inside music stuff going yes. on. You had they, told me about it, but I haven't caught up on it. And you was like, you were surprised that uh, he wrote so many songs. Yeah, it yeah. It was a part of it. So... The last segment of that podcast, they do a segment called I Ain't Saying No Names. Like, you have to tell a story, but you can't name names. So, for the sake of this story, I'm not saying any names. So, I'm sitting in front of Chicago Media Left, and they come in, and I guess when they came in, I'm going to mute you right quick, Left. While they came in, I guess they asked someone of the support staff if Marcus Freeman was actually going to be speaking. And I guess the support staff either said they didn't know or whatever. 
So as they're approaching the bleachers, I see, I hear them having a conversation because they're having an open conversation and it's pretty loud, which confuses me because I'm like, yo, you do realize where you at, right? So this dude is going on and on, on and on, talking about like, yo, who does he think he is? Like even Nick Saban talks at the pro day, you know, what head coach doesn't talk. Wait a at minute! You talking day. about the most, the most? Wait, uh, love. Wait, wait, media wait. Driven. Wait, wait. And Notre Dame, they. I mean, they need the promotion. I mean, it would promote Notre Dame. So now, at this we point, need promotion. Wait a minute. So, so love, love. <laughs> so, look. I'll be honest. I've been in that position. I agree, love. At some point, at a pro day, a head coach probably should be open to media at some point especially if you have big media coming yeah i mean but right? marcus freeman's like what you want me to speak on sam hartman but this left this is where the rubber meets the road because right. as a journalist and someone in the business i understood okay this is when i got embarrassed because now all the media is sitting on the bleachers they're sitting right behind me it's 10 minutes later, and this dude is still talking about this, bro. Oh, he's I'm like, chatting, first like... of all, I'm like, fam, stop being a chatty patty right now, man. Stop <laughs> whining. It's 10 minutes, dude. It's been 10 minutes. You still so knowing that I knew him, and he had never met me in person. I if I texted, if I had texted him at that moment, he would have looked at his phone and been like, oh snap, that's you. Like, yeah, yo, sure. we, used to, we used to talk all the time, da 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 Right. So I'm like, man, I just, I didn't say anything because out of the goodness of my heart, I started to turn around and tell them, look, it's a lot of recruits on campus. Him and the rest of the coaching staff are probably with the recruits right now. You see Peacock okay. down there? You see Peacock down there? He's coming. He's probably going to talk to Peacock. I don't know if he's going to talk to the media. But I'm pretty sure he's going to be here and he's going to speak in some capacity, more than likely on the Notre Dame broadcast. That's right, because Nargis Freeman is on schedule. He on the schedule. He so, got every hour on the hour. So I'm like, yo, why are you mad at support at support staff when their jobs today are to hand out press passes and show you where to sit? That's their only job. They don't job. control Marcus Freeman's schedule. They, they their you? job is to come and observe. Yes, that's it. To tell you where to sit, where you can go, and where you cannot go. And Katie yeah. Lauren again was walking around. That dude, if you want to know about Marcus Freeman, you ask Miss Lauren. Talk to that's Katie. You, that's you right. talk to her. That's, that's who right. you talk to. I started to turn around and let them know. Like, man, let me scoop you. As a fellow Chicagoan, let me scoop you. Scoop you. Yeah, Chicago is about, about to come out. Absolutely. Because last year, Marcus Freeman did speak to the media. But spring practice didn't open until the day after the pro day. Right, right. So he probably getting ready for all he that. He spoke to the media last year, and then the first spring practice was the, the next, next day. day. The first practice was on the 7th, second practice is on the 20th, the day before the pro day, and his press conference is already set up for the 23rd yeah. on tomorrow. So Notre Dame probably did it a little different. Like, yo, he's speaking tomorrow. We're not going to make him available today. Like, right, cool. I'm trying to think Cause of they going Because they're running him around with these recruits. Thank you, Left. And I understood both sides. I understand the Chicago media coming down. Having a nice pick. Heck, you haven't had anything to write about the last two years because the team is horrible. The organization is horrible. You got the number one <laughs> yeah, pick. This is you get Caleb team Williams. Got Zach and, Levine and Kobe White in the city. Yeah. You, just, you don't know what you're doing with the, the team with the Bears. The White Sox is embarrassing. Like, come on. So Go for the first the time highlight. in two years, you actually have something to write about. I get it. I get it. You actually have something to write about. Dude, this dude for 10 minutes is behind me just, man, just going, just going. And he, it got to the point 
Well, I just said, dude, I ain't gonna tell you nothing. I'm, right. I'm, I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you anything. Go, go ahead. And the dude, he pouted the rest of the day. Just pouted yeah. the rest of the day. Yeah. I'm like, man, whatever. Like I could scoop you to some stuff, but at this point. You too, you too far gone. Yeah, you, yeah, you bumping yeah, gums. Yeah, you bumping yeah, gums. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. da, 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 da. Nick Saban did this. <laughs> da, 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 did that. And they need the promotion. Da, da, da. I started to turn around and tell them they need promotion for what? Dude? Yeah, yeah. Like we Notre Dame can play big bank, take little bank with whomever you put up. Put a whomever team up. You, whomever you put up. Put a school up. Marcus Freeman got more cachet than most coaches in college football right now. Like Marcus, he don't he doesn't need to talk to you to promote the football. Talking to you about Joe Alt, how's that gonna promote Notre Dame football? The fact that yeah. the you want you want to see promotion, the Bears were the first team talking to Audrick Estime and, and coaching Joe Alt in drills. Yep, that's promotion. First team. First team. Yes, that's promotion. Yeah, brought, did they bring Ryan Pools out? No, they ain't bring that dude out. He's too. I mean, they spent three, four days with Caleb Williams. They're probably still in LA. Oh, they really? <laughs> they want Caleb. <laughs> but it, dude, it was man. I was embarrassed because when you're from a big market, you have expectations. So I understood him asking the question. But see, this lets me know that he's an OG. Let me scoop you, because I, I had this discussion with my boy LeVon Whitaker. Let me tell you what OGs do. This And it let me know that he ain't an OG, even though he works in Chicago. OGs do this. I was covering the Chicago Bulls for WGN, left. I think back in 14. So this was like Derrick Rose's first year with the New York Knicks. So this was his first game back after being traded. I walk into the post-game locker room in the Knicks locker room. Derrick Rose's locker. The lock, dude, everybody's in the locker room for Derrick Rose. New York, Chicago media. Oh, they're like, they're Derrick Rose, Derrick Rose town. His locker is surrounded to the point where you can't move. I'm like this, left. You can't Jeez. move. That's that's how many people were in there waiting that's for him to get out the shower. That's prior time D Rose. Waiting for him to get out the shower. He gets out the shower. Everybody's getting their phones out. Like, okay, finally. He's man, we get the interview. The door opens and in walks Mike Wilbon and Jim Rose. But Jim Rose is a Chicago legend. He just retired. Like walk in as soon as he as soon as he comes out, they walk in. They walk in, walk through the crowd of media, walk straight up to Derrick Rose, and private interview this dude in front of the rest of the media. Wait, and what? Walk, and walk out. Wait a minute. All the people are standing out. there. All these people have been standing there for 10 minutes waiting on this dude to come out the shower. These two <laughs> Chicago OGs walk in, show up, walk, walk, through, walk the through the crowd, party like the Red Sea, whisper back and forth with D Rose for like two minutes, and leave in front like of everybody. We, in front of everybody, like we got what we need. Y'all can go ahead. <laughs> That's Mike what Wilbur, I was like. Mike Wilbur is a, a beast, though. He a beast. Out of respect, I wanted. At that moment, I wanted to give these dudes a standing ovation. I did. <laughs> I was proud. Like that's how you do it. See I, see, I work in this. I, I eventually I grew up watching Jim Rose, and eventually I ended up taking the same elevator with Jim Rose for four five years. Wow. For five years, I rode the same elevator with that dude as we came from wow. the studio and went down to the studio. One of the biggest blessings in my life. When I saw Every that moment. Morning. When I saw right? when I saw that moment left, I said, "That's an OG. That that's that's an OG." I mean, when you're doing stuff and people just on point, they just know. All right, it's Jim Rose. And time. what Let what do the, what dude didn't realize is that all he had to do, if he was an OG, 
was wait his time, knowing the head coach is going to show up. Yep. He's going to show up. And if I'm a real OG, I'll either talk to staff to say, man, can you bring Coach Freeman over here for a quick second? I just want to ask him one question about this. Yep. Talk he to doesn't Chad. have to be on camera. It That's could right. be off record. I just, man, can you, is it okay if you walk him? But you're not an OG. That's why you're sitting no, back and behind me, Chatty Patty. Chatty. Chatty. Yep. Complaining. You don't cast because, on no other You only doing that. You only do it when it. you when you get hand delivered stuff. You That's try all. to get hand delivered. That's all. And I, I could have given them the information. I could have told them, man, you just, just walk up to Katie. Just walk up to Katie and let her know who you are. Introduce yourself. Because Katie, nice to know. She'll go get him. Absolutely. All that. She ain't going to make Absolutely. it hard for you. She, she'll tell you, like, wait until this time or come see me at this point. That's right. Like, when things settle down or we start player interviews, man, come find me and I'll see what I can do. That's all he had to do. That's all. That's right. But that's when cats know how to work or want to work yeah. and don't want everything to be done for them. See? Nobody, yeah, Mike Wilbon and Jim Rose didn't ask for the New York PR department. Hey, man, can y'all give us some time with Derek? No, they walked in knowing who they were. The Red Sea party, because you saw all the media move. I walked straight up to that dude and asked him two, three questions and turned around and left. Like, all right, peace out. And, 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 and what was fly is that they whispered. It was a private yeah. conversation in public. Absolutely. <laughs> Right in front of everybody. That's right. They can't even get no. They can't even get no side questions off of the questions. And I was like, "Those, those are my OGs <laughs> right there. Those are my Chicago OGs." They showed you how to do it right there. So it was embarrassing, man. It was just a day full of Chicago cats down there whining, complaining. It's like, dude. Then we get to the player interviews. Joe all is there, and y'all don't have nothing to ask. Y'all don't ask nothing. Yeah. If that's the case, we could have sent you a transcript to Chicago. You could have stayed home. That's top five pick of the draft. You ain't got no questions. Is a no shame. No question. Nothing. Especially that the top five pick that's most likely coming to y'all. Nothing. Notre Dame beat report is just running over y'all. Clowns no out excuse here, on man. That. No excuse embarrassed, on that. dude. You're from the third biggest market, man. You don't know how to move. It's embarrassing, man. And stop being a chatty patty, man. And I tapped in. See, well, they, they need to you know check in. in. They need to check. They need to they, check in like cats. They need to check in like cats when they go to LA. Then, but they don't even know that Katie was the plug. Katie walking back and forth, probably past them. They have no idea. No I idea who she was. No. What you looking for? No. <laughs> No, they ain't prepared. No they ain't prepared. That's right. So Marcus Freeman didn't make it That's until right. later when the field drill started because he was too busy recruiting the quarterback that's in town named Deuce Knight. How about that? Too busy making a video presentation that Deuce Knight posted on his social media that had him being the next great in the line of quarterbacks that Mike Denbrock is putting in the NFL. How about that? That's yep. a little bit more important than Marcus Freeman talking to you and watching the vertical jump and the broad jump. Yeah. Hell, Marcus Freeman was one of the only head coaches at the combine. Max, wait, wait. Marcus I Freeman was interviewed at the combine. <laughs> you talking about Notre Dame needs to get promoted? What are you talking about? The man, he, whatever, what, he had his I, own segment. He was yes. on the field. I mean, the man was, he was as most, he was more involved than Nick Saban's ever been at no combine. I, you know what I mean? Dude, like, talking about Notre Dame needs talking. the promotion. This dude was just at the combine on national TV. Yeah. They even showed his, his combine tape and told Marcus Freeman to comment on his own combine tape. Love. Talk about promotion. Man, they promoted man. his plan. It's like, come on, man. He's Notre these Dame media guys staff. must not be paying attention. Yo, 
from what was said, it seems like he gave Notre Dame support staff an earful. Notre Dame support staff, but Chicagoans in the media, I apologize. I apologize. I'm sorry. Whoever had to deal with that, I apologize. That's right. Clown stuff, man. That's Let right. Me left the podcast. So Deuce Knight, you had a conversation before he left. Uh, what was Deuce talking about for his trip, Love? Had a good chance to talk to him to see, you know, kind of the vibes of what he was looking for and interested in. And he just really loved the community and the guys that have been recruited with him. And I think that's a very special thing to where you going out your way to meet guys that you've talked to on the recruiting trail, guys that are committed, building those relationships. You know, those linemen are important to him. Every time a lineman commit, he, he the first one on it. So you can tell that this is a kid that loves the, the, the team aspect. He loves the, the, the camaraderie. And as a quarterback, you got to be that catalyst. You got to be that gravitating force. They talk about the, the the sun and moon and the stars. You got to be the sun that attracts to everything else. And that's that's a really good quality to have when you're going into a situation that you still got two years left. Well, about a, what, a year and a half left. You still recruit it. And even the guys that have committed, you're just solidifying those relationships. I just had mentioned to him that get close with Denbra because that's the true key into any of this is having that close bond with him because he needs to know the type of player you are. He needs to know the type of person you are. That trust is going to develop because that's what Jaden Daniels and him got, and you can see where it takes him. You know, when Denbrock kind of knows what you think and knows how you uh, are in the flow of the game, what your, what your personality is like, you're going to take off because he's good at adapting to that. But Deuce is up there just hanging with the recruits. I thought he was going to go apartment shopping a little early. You know, Eddie Street is building them. Eddie Street's building them new apartments. I thought he was just trying to put his name on the lease by the time he get up there, because NIL got to pay for that. You know, NIL should that, pay for that. <laughs> so you thought he was definitely getting up there to go ahead and plant his flag, huh? Yeah, yeah, he got to go get what, get them early option lease options. You know, because by the time he get there, he need to be taking that nice view. In front of Touchdown Jesus, that little apartment right on that East Street so you can bike to the stadium, all that. You know, that needs to be his deal. But I love the fact that he's focused on the guys that are coming in, focused on being around the, the building, you know, soaking it all up. Because when you get there, it shouldn't be a shock. It shouldn't be an overwhelming experience. It's something that he's getting into a position where he's comfortable, guys knowing where he's in there, now he can go to work. Now he can feel like he's a part of that room before he's a part of that room. We already know that Gino has been taking a, a nice approach to maintain a strong relationship. And Deuce has been doing his part. So when it comes to him visiting other places and, and, and other players calling him old Miss recruit, I think he's very true to where he's at and, and he's not leaving any time soon. I still can't believe they called the man an old Miss QB recruit. What are they thinking? <laughs> man, look, the list of players, it's a full week, man. Xavier Southall, 2024 PWO signee. He's going to be in town. Tabram Benny Powell, 24 class. Jerome Bettis Jr., Elijah Burris, James Flanagan Jr., Owen Strebick, Dominic Hulock out of Chicago, Joseph Reef out of Chicago, Christopher Burgess out of Chicago. Yes, all the Chicago 25 commits are in town. Derek Meadows, Chuck McDonald, Mark Zachary out of and the 25 the class. Say it again. You're breaking up a little. You broke up a little bit. I think you were trying to make the point of Derek Meadows and uh and Deuce Knight. Is that what you were saying, Left? I think we lost love. He must be going through his own. I think he was trying to make a point that one of the main reasons that Deuce Knight was coming down this weekend was to be there with uh, Derek Meadows, the 6'4 wide receiver out of Bishop Gorman, four-star who could end up being a five-star based upon his production. He's in town this weekend. 
And I think that's one of the main reasons that Deuce Knight mentioned to Malik that he was coming down to lock in on uh, Derek Meadows and get him in the class. So to continue to list the guys, Chuck McDonald, uh, 25 kid, is coming in uh, out of modern day. Mark Zachary out of Warren Central. And then Israel out of the depot, a defensive end. He doesn't have an offer yet from 25 class. Noah Grubbs, 26 quarterback. It's going to be on campus. Jerry is Rogers, defensive end. 26, Chicago kid, Mikhail McBride, defensive lineman, who I just spoke to this weekend. I, I think it's two articles we're putting up over at Irish Breakdown, the message board for Mikhail McBride, talking about his offer and what he's looking for for the visit. Gabe Hill, defensive lineman, the 26th class. Uh, Tiki Hola, 26th defensive lineman. Uh, Al Washington is going to be putting in some work this weekend. Jamarcus Weiss. One of the top 10 defensive linemen in the nation. He'll be in town. Uh, Kasani Giles, defensive back, 26. He's in town. Ebert Hill, big time defensive back out of Ohio. He's in town. Zach Fort, big time safety. One of the top 10 safeties in the uh, nation in 26 class is in town. And then Chase Enlow, running back. Doesn't have an offer yet. 2026, he's in town as well. Uh, Mark Zachary gets in town today. So he's spending two days. The kid out of Warren Central, defensive back, J.C. Anderson, uh, interviewed him. Have an article, Zion, Illinois, 6'7", 230-pound tight end. 6'7", 230, ladies and gentlemen. Smooth, big guy, long arms. And, yo, he loves to block. He loves to block Zion, Illinois. That's right by the Wisconsin border in northern Illinois, J.C. Anderson. I think his interview, uh, his his article that I wrote, I think it's going to be on the message board later today. He gets in town later on today and will be there for two days as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's why Marcus Freeman's time was busy. That's why. Not because he was being disrespectful to the Chicago media that came down to see Joe Alt. There are more pressing, he had more pressing business besides being there for you. He had more pressing business. Let's talk about the practice the day before. Just had to get there out of there. Big time weekend. We'll have reports over at the message board, irishbreakdown.com. Go sign up if you haven't. Intel from all the guys that'll be going up to Notre Dame this week. All right, left you back. That left is still going through a zone. So I put my practice report up, and I think the one thing I talked about the other day is how confident um, Marcus Freeman is and how confident he's moving now in comparison to when we used to see him previously. Um, the vibe around the program, the confidence he has in the other coaches. And see, Marcus Freeman has already always operated with giving autonomy to the coaches when it comes to their position rooms. But the way he's moving now, full confidence. He was fully engaged with the linebackers at practice on Wednesday, supporting Max Bullock, spent some time with the safeties, Marty Biaggi. It's helping Mike Mickens with the safeties during the spring. And so those are two positions that he's really focused on. And those are two young positions, right? Of course, he has a Bronco Nagurski winner coming back in safety, a possible future first, second round pick, and Xavier Watts. But he knows. Wait, so Howard, an Howard Cross was at that. Howard Cross was at the same awards. I didn't know he was. Did he win one or did he was just there for support? Are you talking about the Walter Camp stuff earlier this week? Yeah, was that was he oh, there? Man. Supporting Jeremiah, no, those are like no, they all were there. I think the Walter Camp stuff is more about uh the Walter Camp um all pro team or whatever team's person, second teams or whatever. You know, Howard Cross, if I'm not mistaken, made second team. If I'm not mistaken, I might be off a little bit. 
if I'm not mistaken, Jeremiah Love was there for like freshman team or something. It I'm not sure why everyone was there. So I might be speaking okay. and putting the wrong information out there. I don't want to do that. But I know what you're talking about. But you, it, uh, is there does, anything else you want to add? Because you, you, we didn't hear, people didn't get to hear your comments about Deuce Knight and Derek Meadows. Yeah, so Deuce Knight was really high on going because of Derek Meadows. He really likes that relationship and that recruitment process between the two. I guess they became really close friends. And, you know, Deuce is, is seeing it for what it is, man. He really enjoys the process, enjoys being at Notre Dame. It's not like every time he's going up there, He's asking for the new NIL deal or asking for, you know, all the, the special amenities of a Notre Dame quarterback. He really is wants to just be a part of the team. And I think for a kid to be that excited at that age. Man, we lose left again. Like, man, Derek Meadows must have put a hex on us, right? Like Sealy in the color purple. Until you do right by me. But no, seriously. Every time he starts talking about Derek Meadows, he goes out. Go ahead, love. I know. Look, I'm in the I'm in the, I'm in the dang mountains. <laughs> so, you know, it, only Yogi the Bear gets service out here, man. But, yeah, Derek Meadows, a special relationship that he wants to build uh, with Deuce Knight. Deuce Knight's really high on Derek Meadows. So a lot of what I love about Deuce Knight is he wants to be a part of the team. He's not up there trying to get backdoor deals or be a, become a millionaire in the process of getting to Notre Dame. He just wants to make sure the guys that are highly recruited on that board, he gets to retain and, and secure the bag and be a part of the class with him because he knows just how important – it is to build your class in, in today's college football landscape. So Derek Meadows being a guy he singled out specifically, I know that's somebody that's important to the success of the class, and I trust that the quarterback knows what's best, right? Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, Carter Scruggs announced this morning uh, offensive tackle, four-star in the 26th class that, from Virginia. He's going to be in town as well. So, yes. Marcus Freeman had more important things, far more important things. Naturally. But no, going back to the practice, um, it's obvious, ladies and gentlemen, when I tell you, and this is not overkill, you know, I don't mind going out on limbs early. I believe in what I believe in and what I see with my eyes. This wide receiver core is going to be so much more productive. Yeah. Than previous. Much more of a threat. Man. Much more of a threat. Man. Um, it's just obvious. Even if you watched the pro day yesterday and you saw Jaden Greathouse and Jaden Harrison working out with Sam Hartman, you can see it in the way they ran routes. Jaden Greathouse looks fantastic, bro. He looks faster. He looks quicker, much leaner. He kind of looked like, still looked like a big body high school kid. Last year, he looks like what I'm a saying, like, But what, but how much faster? A four or five fast? That's all he has to be. He's inside, yeah, bro. He, he's, he's, not a, sure. yeah, he's, he's not a field. He's not going to be to the field, maybe occasionally to the boundary. And, pre and predominantly working inside. Him and Jaden Harrison will be the two inside guys the majority of the time. Hey, you have to love it, man. You have to love it. When you have the fast, but Jaden Harrison literally, Cam Williams in that interview, I think someone said Jaden Harrison was the fastest guy in the wide receiver room. And Jaden Harrison wow. might end up being your third or fourth option. This year, yeah. This right. Year, yeah, and that's and that's a good thing. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, uh, you continue to be impressed. 
Uh, I didn't get a chance to watch the offensive line. Um, I did. I was sitting next to B. Driss. So B. Driss felt like the offensive had a line had a really good. They had a really good day. Uh, Rocco seemed to have a good day. He said Billy Shrouth and teams to look like, yo, he's taking that next step and getting better. And then you just never hear, dude. Charles Jagasaw is that type of person you watch an entire practice and you forget he's there. You know why? Because he just puts in work snap after snap. Yeah, he's just doing his job. He's just doing his job. He make it, he make it, he make it look normal. Like this is what you this is how you go to practice every day. You know, I'm not looking fresh out the package. I blend in because I just I do what I'm supposed to do, you know. Yeah, so which, I mean, we, was... which in my opinion. We never had to worry about that hearing his recruiting story. He said, I just want to go in there and watch film for about three hours when he's dead, and then I'll commit. <laughs> Facts. He said, let me just go in there, pick their brand a little bit. I'm trying to go to the league, and this is the best way. He said, and broke it down. I'm ready to go. And I, and I guarantee you it was a lot like how that video you retweeted on, Twitter, on X of he stand breaking down uh, how to block. Man, look, let me tell you something. Let me get a correction. Because I think when I was talking about J.C. Anderson, I said uh, Zion, Illinois. It's actually Mount Zion, Illinois, which is closer to Decatur. Down in Southern. I think that's like the Southwest area of illinois decatur's not too far from carbon okay. i mean not carbondale but Deca it's not too far from illinois state and normal it's in that same area going okay. towards champagne a little bit it, going, no it's going towards champagne but it's a little bit further west zion illinois right. is at the top of the state mount zion is that in the southern part yeah that so midwest geography for you man. it's all the same it's all the same. It makes a big difference politically, though. It makes a big difference politically. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I believe that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But as you far go, as you football, go, you go Mount Sinai, you you make America great land in Mount Sinai area. Excuse me, Mount Zion. Mount Zion, Mount Zion is definitely yes, yes, absolutely. It's definitely different than the Chicago land area. Absolutely. But no, um, I mean, we can't talk about line play because they were running like some seven on seven stuff. So it's more about technique movement. No one was really pass rushing. So there was nothing for us. Well, we got kicked out after a certain point. So we didn't really get to see anything go live. But, you know, just watching Mike yeah, Brown. It's still early. Yeah, Mike Brown is really a... a much better see you don't have to know that you notice mike brown for his teaching and not his screaming ah okay you, you feel okay. what i'm you saying you can tell you can tell that when he's talking to guys they're looking different than next rep yes because he may yes. he may be doing some yelling you know out, out of passion but he's really he's really refining guys games yes Yes, and you can tell that, and there are no favorites because the guys Every, nodding their head, you know, they nodding their head. Okay, cool. Okay, <laughs> I've seen him. I've seen him bring Chris Mitchell back. I've seen him bring Jaden Thomas back. I've seen him bring Cam Williams back. There, there are no favorites. I'm coaching everybody the same. Okay. Well, well, well. He don't. He don't. He's not leaning towards a number one at all. He's not. No, no, no. That to has being a number side, one. You know? Being a number one has zero to do with me as a coach. If you do something wrong, I'm coaching okay. you. I don't care if you're That's number right. one, number That's two, right. number three. I'm coaching you. And it's immediately evident that that was missing, which led me to say, yo, dude, Bears watching. And everybody was like, oh, man, what do you mean? No. It's a stark difference in actual coaching. And if they thought 
wait till you see yo look at the wide receivers that we watched this week in the 26 class and compare it to the offers that the previous coach sent out and tell me who put out better offers in that first year yeah just go down the list now he has to close and bring in the Braylon James, the Jaden Greathouse, and Rico class. But I have full confidence. 25 class is like cherry on top. Because he hasn't been on these guys from the jump. The 26 class is going to be the true test of Mike Brown as an evaluator. And like I said, while people are complaining about sophomores and juniors running four or fives, like when are we going to get dudes at wide receiver? Like, go watch two of the wide receivers that were starters for Notre Dame under Brian Kelly towards the end. Run four seven. Are we yeah. really complaining about four five four four? Yeah, that's why Chris Mitchell felt disrespected, and we were like, "Yo, we're sorry. We're just not used to four four in the room." No, we hey. <laughs> Listen. It's been a while. <laughs> been a while since we had something like that. But I think it's good because at the same time, you know, it evolves and changes the, the face of what the offense looks like. Yeah. yeah. And and now you 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 go from, yeah, we have talent in the room. We just we just don't know when it's going to activate to now where we can't ignore a 4-4 guy, 4-3 guy, where where we can't ignore him to where, okay, the offense has got to have some targets towards his way regardless, right? Yeah, we want to go heavy run focus, but we can't, uh, we can't uh, 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 afford to avoid a 4-3 presence on the field. And Denbrock understands what that looks like with the Will Fuller project. There would be times, like in the Virginia game. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's close. They're they're playing good. We're playing good, but then we're like, okay, we're gonna come out of a timeout and just throw a go ball, and there's nothing you can do to it. We don't care if the guy's lined off seven yards, twelve yards. He pressed up. Wheels running by him. We're max protected and just throwing it deep. Those are those are things that Denbrock does. He's like, you know what? We've been playing cute with y'all, but now it's time to show y'all that we have better recruits. We have better talent. And we're going to do it in a simple way, and we trust that our athletes can make it happen. You know, we're not going to overcomplicate things. Like LeBron said, he's like, I don't understand how when a play works, you just don't run it until they stop it. That's a Mike Denbrock mindset. We gonna run, if we burn you on a go route, we're going to come right back to it. Right. So I do appreciate the uh, the fact that the receiver room is making us involve them in the offense. Before they were just role players. Before it was like we need to throw to have relief for the run. Now the talent is is existing in there to where it's like, oh, if we don't throw, we might not hit the markers that we're expected to hit with this talented team. You can only run so many. Uh, uh, run plays to get so many points. But it's unlimited when you become balanced and have actual threats on the outside and the inside. Man, look, all I know, ladies and gentlemen, is that be rest rest assured. Notre Dame is a more athletic football team. Man, we are entering into the land of no excuses, as you've said previously, Left. That's your third, right. Your third class, third recruiting class, 25 and 26, should be the crescendo of Notre Dame recruiting under Marcus Freeman. And it's time to take that next step on the field. Like, it flat out. And, and not only take the next step, but feel good about taking it. Don't mm-hmm. be – Afraid of the fact that we're better to the point where now we have to be able to adjust to things. Be confident that, okay, we've restocked the shelves. 
we know what we got. We done took the grocery list and got everything on the grocery list. So when you get in that kitchen the next day, don't act like we got to look for the ingredients because we got them. We done got the jalapenos. We done got the, the cheese and the, and the ground beef. It's taco night. I don't want to go in there and be like, well, where's the, where's the, uh, uh, the cumin? Where's the uh, uh, the sazon for the right? No, 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 no. We already got that. We already went shopping for the players to make this this whole thing better. So when it comes to cooking the meal, preparing the meal, going to these practices and, and getting better, it should be a confidence in that recipe. Because before we was missing a little a, a little uh, uh, missing the cheese, missing the tomatoes. We had a half onion, not a full onion. Yeah. Now we in there saying we got tortilla shells. We can make quesadillas. We can make burritos. We even got the sauce for enchiladas. So it's so it's all a cart. It's whatever whatever we got to prepare for that day. It ain't just Taco Tuesday where we serving up Taco Bell shells. Now we got a little bit of flavor. Now we can be like Applebee's with the fajitas and had a plate sizzling when you come out. We, we fancy like that now. Now it's like, okay, you got to be careful before you touch that. You know how you go to fancy restaurants. They said, be careful as they set the plate down because it's at 500 degrees. Right. <laughs> be careful with this offense because we're going to have 500 yards if you're not careful. I like that. So you gotta you gotta think of it differently. We we fine dining. When you fine dining, you know you took the you start doing things you don't usually do. You start putting your forks in the right place. You start tucking in your your napkin. You ordering Shirley Temples, knowing damn well it's just cherry soda. <laughs> but you just feel a little different. You know you just feeling a little more confident. So that's exactly what we're transitioning to, you know, and I think that's the right place we should be because we was that four out of five restaurant that that wasn't called fine dining, but we had good food. Now we got all the decorations. We got the candles on the table. We only open from six to 10. You know, we don't even open during the day no more. No, 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 no. The, the menu has the menu has market price on it, so you just gotta catch the flavor of the day. Some days we ain't got everything, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because we 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 that specific, and it goes down to why it's important. We need to have that wagyu steak. I don't want to hear we got oh we got the ribeye and the, and the New York strip. No, 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 no. We need that wagyu. Who's the wagyu? Because that's what they're coming for. Yeah, you can get your little ribeye, you get your little T-bone, little a little a little fillet, because that's what everybody got. But when you get to that wagyu, they're like, oh, no, that's market price. We it, it, the value changes by the day, because it's that good. And that's what we got. Chris Mitchell, it sounded like it, because at first we thought the we thought the wagyu with Chris Mitchell was only. $29. He said, no, 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 you disrespecting me. <laughs> he said, no, this this wagyu right here, that's 50 and up. Y'all, y'all just haven't tasted it yet. And we got a little taste of that practice and we said, oh yeah, that's the that's the real deal. That's that baby calf. Yeah. That deal. So premium, premium, what, uh, what Papa John, premium product, premium and now they lying on that premium pizza at the end, though. <laughs> now they can have premium products. I don't know where they get the products from, but that premium pizza joint, <laughs> nah, nah. Let me stop for going my pizza rant. Lucky Lefty podcast. So we talk pro day. My apologies to Notre Dame support staff. Chicago's better than that. Uh, we talked about recruits that are going to be on this weekend, be in this weekend, Derek Meadows, Deuce Knight, the rest of the cast. And then also, 
Yeah. Just talking about the practice report. Yeah. Oh, we can't go without left. It's a joy to watch Kenny Minchie and CJ Carr throw. Um, oh, yeah. I don't it's know. It's like what, a relief. Mm hmm. Like I said, it was just seven on seven stuff. I didn't see any live stuff. But once again, when they came out with the first group of seven on seven, there was number 18 leading the way. That's all I'm saying. I'm just reporting. I'm just okay, reporting. Hey, yeah, you're just doing your job. I'm just doing my job. They're doing my job. It can mean absolutely nothing. It can mean absolutely nothing. They could just try to uh, pull a fast one on us because they, you know. There you go. They don't want to give up all they, they secrets. But And then another case could be 18 is looking like the 18 from the Denver Broncos. <laughs> you know, and I'm not, you know, you're going to hear, I'm not, look, ladies and gentlemen, CJ Carr looks good. Yeah. CJ Carr looks good because let me, you know, CJ Carr is a very, very good prospect. That's right. Very well. Very recruited. good. Very good prospect. What you're not going to get from us is overreaction. That's right. Because if we watch CJ Carr throw with other elite throwing quarterbacks, he would blend in. CJ Carr is a very good recruit that fits what we're doing. He's a very good dude. Kenny Minchie has the best arm in the room. Without a doubt. Hands down. CJ is right Probably there. Second. Right yeah. there. All right. But when you have not seen those type of throws over the last four years, no. you know, people kind of get like, oh my God, did you see that? Like, Yeah. But it's a uh, different height than a Sam, than a, a Riley Leonard height. It's dude. a different height because the hype around CJ and Kenny is, oh, we got something for sure. We know that in a vacuum when it comes to in uh, uh, increase and the way we throw the football is there. We don't need to think about, oh, he's Heisman. This and that. We just know that the quality of practice we getting in that pass game it's, totally it's, it's, there. it's totally different. That's not saying they're going to take over the world or nothing. But when you when you in that room, the, the bar is raised. The bar is raised from a 60% to damn near 72%. So you can't even get into the room if you're a super efficient, accurate guy. That's just mm -hmm. that's one of the things you need to have getting into the room outside of being six three six four. <laughs> hey man, I can't wait to get down there Wednesday, boy, for practice number three. That's or right. Practice four. That'll be practice four. Three is set tomorrow, and then we get practice four next wednesday so that'll be another practice report which goes up over at patreon.com forward slash lucky lefty network three hours before it drops on youtube so man go subscribe you get early access to all the practice reports interviews things of that nature and then we finally release it on youtube and then talk about it later on that night pretty good stuff today left Oh, absolutely. Man. Absolutely. We still didn't get a chance to talk about the offensive lineman and Joe Rudolph. We might have to go tomorrow. I mean, we could keep going. I mean, Joe Rudolph can't be excluded too often because he's got a – he's taking over that whole line size. He's brought that, that, that – and, Yeah, we'll hear from him and Al Washington. We'll, we'll say them. We'll give them their own show. Him and Al Washington, and then Marcus Freeman talk tomorrow. So, man, it's a lot we can get into. You know what time it is, though. Petticoat. 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 Petticoat.
It's time to get petty. Oh, we did a good job executing. Now, are you upset with something? And fire up the Petticoat Junction train. I just don't like you. You don't? No. What is today's petty historic Petty Junction? Petty Junction, Petty Story today brought to you by Nora Whiskey at NoraWhiskey.com. That premium American whiskey at NoraWhiskey.com. Hey, Left, do you like your uh your baby pictures, man, that you see when you go back home or that your mom and dad might post <laughs> on social media? <laughs> yeah, I enjoy them sometimes, man. It, uh, it's crazy to see I was that little at one point. Do you feel like you look the same? Uh, a little bit. I think. Um, I think. I think I've pretty much stayed consistent so far. I'm not. Too, you said I stay consistent. It's, now it's like footwork for a quarterback, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because you know you get older, things happen. You know your ears get bigger or something. You know, your hairline different. A whole bunch of stuff. So you know. Last couple of weeks, you know, just being around family, being at the house, you know, going through pictures and stuff. And my mother came up with this one, dude. And uh, my wife was like, yo, this is so funny because I swear you look exactly the same. I'm like, yo, this is crazy, dude. Look at that. That's young SD, bro. Oh, yeah. yeah. Young SD looks just the same. Young SD, fourth, <laughs> fifth grade picture. You know what I mean? Had the little knit tie, the little polo shirt. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you was polo in the fifth? Oh, dude, I was young polo down still. Bugle boy and polo. You can tell me nothing, boy. No, the AK. Not with the bugle boy. No, nah, bugle boy and polo back in the day, bro. That's right. That's young Chicago swag right there. But the only thing you missing is the mic, Sean. The only thing you missing is the mic. The mic was always there, and my mother said, excuse me, I had to sneeze. My mother was like, yeah, you've always been able to talk, so. Okay, so, so that mic- was just young, that was just young SD at the time. Yeah, one the mic. mic SD, yeah, the, one mic. Yeah, <laughs> there was definitely one mic at the time. <laughs> it had no problems talking. So, That's right. I'm going to go ahead and put Kendrick Lamar on the petty train. Uh, Kendrick, first of all, people is the Kendrick verse is overshadowing the fact that Future and Metro put out an incredible album. That, that's oh, number yeah, that one. Was good. Let me leave with that because I think it's getting left behind. The, the the album is yo, this cat Metro and his beats. Him and bro. Future always make fire though. Him and Future know how to how to put that thing together. I'm I'm stuck on the fact that. People are talking about the diss track, and I'm like, do you hear this beat? Yeah, the beats are crazy. Like, forget Kendrick's verse, which was fire. If you're going to, if you're going to diss, as he said, we don't do this sneak dissing. I'm surprised you putting a Chicago. No, I put him on the petty train because I love the fact that he was petty, and he came after old boy. <laughs> He came. He came after both of those light skinned dudes. I like it. Somebody got it. Uh, hold on, J. Cole ain't light skinned now. What do you want to call him, Left? <laughs> I wouldn't say light skinned. Well, see, I like it because that cat, dude. I, I love that cat because. See, J. Cole does that, that that he's he's real cute with it. Like he disses people, but he likes to be cute with it. Okay. And, you know, Drake, Drake is always throwing rocks and hiding his hand. Always. Always. You know. I mean, that's always. how he make music. That's how he oh, makes. yes. He'll, All time. he'll still carry on beefs 10 years later. He don't care. And the last time everything got stirred up. It was Kendrick that came out with a verse. That's right. 
it was Kendrick that came out with a verse last time. Like, dude, come on, man. And now again, everything is boring. Here comes Kendrick to the rescue again. Like I said, I have to stir it up again. Like, dude, ain't no big three. It's big me. I said, okay. Then he took a direct okay. jab at your boy. Said that cat Prince outlived Mike Jack, oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, all, that, all, that, all that uh, Mike Jack stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I yep. wonder if like, Drake gonna really go a Meek Mill version on it. He gonna, he gonna put out double tracks on Kendrick? I doubt it. I really doubt it. Because I don't think Drake went that West Coast smoke either. I don't, I don't, man. I don't think he wants that smoke period, man. I'm gonna be honest, man. <laughs> I don't think he wants that smoke period. Jay Grizz says uh he's on the Jersey Mike subs right now. Jay Grizz, man, only sub I get from Mike from uh Jersey Mike's is that Jack Rob. Chicken bacon. Oh, okay. You don't get the chicken bacon ranch. Number 42. Whatever number 42 is, I call it the Jack Rob. It's chicken. I think no, got bacon on it though. No, it's the chicken Philly joint. Oh yeah, that's a good one. It's the chicken Philly. I call it you Jack like Rob because it's number forty-two. You like the peppers and onions and all that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Throw some bacon on that thing. It's gonna change your life. Uh, you know it's Ramadan. I'm trying to stay away from the bacon. Ramadan? You Muslim? No, man. I was. I threw that out of the joke because <laughs> you said bacon. No, I'm not Muslim, man. Hey Chicago, hey, it didn't turn Obak in the in the in the, in the, uh, in the Palestine over there. It's a bunch of Arabs and all that. Prayer rugs all over the place. You are like, okay. Stupid. That's what they turned. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> You're crazy, bro. You're crazy. But no, you know, definitely try out that 40, that number 42, that Jack Rob. That's right. It's fire. It's it's right. it really is. It's fire. Lucky Lefty Podcast. Uh, let's see. Connor Nepper. Uh, what got you into Notre Dame football? Uh, my grandfather. Plain and simple. That's right. Good man. Good mm -hmm. man. So, yeah, you see Drake put Hannah Hidalgo on his IG. I thought That's, people talking hey, about OBO that. Early. Hidalgo. That's it, just rhyme. Well, OBO Hidalgo. We got, Here we, go. we got the superstars back in the building. Here we go. That's all we need. That's all we need. Bring that sky attention back to Notre Dame, man. Oh, OVO Hidalgo, dude. OVO Hidalgo. It just yeah, it just go dude. together. It roll I off have the too much. I have too much respect for Hannah's game. Her game is too street and too hard <laughs> to be that connected to something that's soft. Don't uh, do that, Hannah. Don't do uh, that. Don't go uh, Hollywood. Don't go Hollywood. Don't you do that. Hey, she know where to go there. She know who gonna who gonna, who gonna boost her up over there. Yes, she need that over your nil bag now. No, she don't. Her game speaks for itself. Her game speaks for itself. She don't need that dude. She don't need that dude. Now you sound like old boy from Chicago yesterday talking about they need the promotion. You don't need that. <laughs> well, we talking about we need some of them amenities now. No, no, you know how you go to Oregon and get the, 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 the fresh shoes every month. Ooh, what are we gonna get? Some we're gonna get some fresh under armors. No, 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 no. We're gonna get that nice uh over your uh with that lifestyle package. You know what I'm saying? She's gonna walk around with the sweats, get that, that that green, blue, and gold swag. He might even get her, you know how Drake do it, Drake do it big. Yo, I didn't know Maris Leofow was dating uh, Sonya Centrone. Who is that? Uh, she's a guard for Notre Dame. Oh, okay. you, man, y'all football players, y'all got a nice little uh, thing going with the women's basketball team, huh? That's a little history oh, there. Man. Oh, man, listen, listen. You know, we, we enjoy we enjoy our women's basketball team. Man, oh, no, pause, no. pause. You got to be careful with the way you put that out there, bro. No, I'm saying, you know, we we have a great relationship in the sports arena, you know. Okay, and, okay. And, and they and they win, we win. We got something to talk about. That's the thing. And you, you know, but, you party together, socialize together. Okay. That's right. When uh when when Enrique started hitting them shots, though, we ain't had too much to talk about after that because yeah, they had won a championship, 
And so they, they left the conversation a little bit. So she, wait a minute, they big dogs you do? Enrique <laughs> was big dogging y'all? Wait a minute. Uh, what, when, uh, when Enrique went to Dancing with the Stars, I was like, yeah, she a star now. We ain't, we ain't even talking about the same thing. We catch her on ABC on Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Yo, we got to get Enrique. <laughs> we got to get Enrique on the podcast, bro. We got to yeah, get on the she, podcast yeah. so I can ask her about that. Then she started, then she started hanging with uh, uh, Mark Cuban over at State Farm. You know what I mean? So it's all good over there. Yeah, she's getting that state farm money, boys. Hun Pete, hun Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes. Uh... Okay. I'm hitting up right now. Like, yo, we gotta get That's you right. on the podcast. Lucky That's left right. the podcast. That's Anybody right. else on the petty train, dude? I think we covered it today. Oh, I want to play this clip. You know, Theo Pinson has a podcast. Him and his other former North Carolina teammate left. And uh, this goes back to something that happened on Sunday. But I want to point out something because it it is absolutely funny. Just give us the history because I need to know. So. Oh, no, no, no. I want to play this because this goes back to something I said. I was supposed to play this when I said I dap your boy, uh, Dylan McCullough. I was supposed to play that. So I, yeah, I can go ahead and play this now, Left. Just a little bit of history, Left. Listen to this. Listen to this. A lot of times, you know, Black Things, Happy mm -hmm. Black History Month, uh, mm -hmm. Black Things come into the mix and it seems like it's just, it's cool. So like it permeates yeah. all the pop culture. Everybody wants to be a part of it. But the reality is, is most things that folks think are just some cool Black Things came out of innovation and they came out of having to figure something out when they couldn't do something just because they wanted to freely. Mm. The DAP is no exception. Mm. So Folk Life magazine had an article called Five on the Black Hand Side, Origins and Evolutions of the DAP by Lamont. Hamilton. <laughs> now, the DAP originated in the 60s among black soldiers in the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, it did. The black power movement was growing. There was racial unrest in cities. Young African Americans were being sent into combat, and the DAP was about unity and survival. Mm. There were cases of black soldiers reportedly being shot by white soldiers during combat. Wow. And so it was a physical act of solidarity, like, hey, bruh, I see you, you see me, watch my back out there. Right. It was used to convey their commitment to looking after one another. Wow. And it's an acronym for dignity and pride. Wow. So the DAP was even banned in the military because folks thought it was a code yeah. for doing a black power sign. Wow. Later in the war, the military saw the utility of using the DAP in medical treatment of black combatants, combatants with post-traumatic stress disorder and created a program of DAP therapy. So. In present day, when we see folks dapping up, dapping up, dapping up, we have to remember That's that, the history yes, of it. Yes, there's a yeah. tremendous diversity of daps, and it came out from movements of the military company. Wow. Wow. And so, wow. Yeah, so we see it as just like, hey, what's yeah. up, what's yeah, up? Yeah. But there's always a deeper meaning. Hey, Lev, you know what? Man? I was going to play that earlier because the feeling I got when I dapped with Dylan McCullough yesterday, bro, and what he told me, I kind of got that feeling like, yo, I like what y'all, man, I rock with y'all. Y'all my dude. That's right. I don't, he, he I don't know this dude. on a different level with it. Yeah. And That's finally, right. man, that was my first time hearing this, dude. And finally realizing the roots of it, I'm like, that's why it's important in the culture. when Because, you, you know, you can't dap everybody, bro. I don't dap everybody. It, it, has it, don't like even, it doesn't even flow like that with everybody. No, there's some cast in the culture. I, like, I don't you, dab. Yeah, you know who to dab and who not to. It just kind of happens like that. Yeah, it is literally a connection. Like you, like yo, like before we even dab, we just locked eyes, dude. Like yo, and it, it's not about the dab. It's the head nod in public as well. Yeah, it's the head nod. Yeah. That's a lot of different things, man. So I thought that was like super cool, bro. I did. I thought that was super That's cool. Great. I thought that was super cool. And then I have this left. Yeah, check this out. This is what I was talking about that previously happened on Sunday. Oh my God. Did you see the game where he hit against Denver? 
Are you serious? What? What sick human being does some shit? Like oh my God. Did you see the game where he hit against Denver? Are you serious? What? What sick human being does some shit like that? And when I turned time. the TV off because I was mad as fuck. You <laughs> sick motherfucker. Ah, oh shit. What? What the hell are you doing? And then it's going through this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Kai. And I know you're watching the shit. You know, I would have just been looking at you like, you sick as hell. You sick in the head. Denver, you should be ashamed. Denver not even mad. Mm. They're like, we just lost all day. I'm, I'm just appreciative to be a part of it. <laughs> he shot a lefty runner a le- from bro, past the free throw line. Behind the free throw line. On Jokic. Jokic was chasing him. On the move. Justin, he's moving he's left. Moving. He's moving. moving. I tried moving it target. the next day. That joint was four feet wide. Left. <laughs> Shit was some bullshit. So, love, I play that because I wanted to ask you, was there anybody, LL Nation, you know how you watch a game as a shorty and you go outside and try to emulate the move? Was there anybody? I hit it perfectly. <laughs> so you always hit it perfectly. I'll talk about that Kyrie shot. I hit that perfectly. Yeah, you're left hand. You're the left hand. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yo, I do. I went out and used to try to emulate the kiss the rim dunk. So I was blessed to have a rim in front of the crib. Oh, yeah. In the neighborhood. So I would lower the rim. At that point, you know, I'm about mm, Seventh grade, sixth, seventh grade. That's right. And at that point, I'm like still struggling to palm the ball. It's the worst. But I'm trying, I'm trying to do the kiss the rim, right? You know, lean in. You basically at a 45 degree angle if you're doing it like Mike, right? So one time I lowered it too far and went to kiss the rim and bang the heck out of my head on the rim left. Oh Lord Jesus! Oh Lord Jesus! I banged the head on the rail. You on that Anthony Edwards? I lowered it too. I, I I brought it down too low. Love. I brought it down to like nine when it should have been at nine and a half, which makes a huge difference. Well, it might have been eight and a half. Yeah, I think I might have brought it down to eight and a half. It was just like, man, dude, I think I had a concussion and didn't know I had a concussion. I just kind of kept playing with my friends. Them rims is unforgiving too, boy. Man. And then I used to emulate baseball swings in the backyard. Really? Yeah, I used to emulate Tony Gwynn's baseball swing. Back in the day, Tony uh, Gwynn and Rod Carew. Not the Juan Soto. Uh, they the well, who's the player that was talking Ooh, about that? I don't even know if Juan Soto. Oh, that did happen. That did happen. Yeah. Uh, Jazz Chisholm was talking yep. about yo, a youngster. He was talking about the uh, he's on the Marlins now. Uh, man, yep. what's that young kid's name? The lefty had a really good season last year. I guess he hit a home yep. run. And they were berating the veterans were berating him and talking about he's not Juan Soto. And it's like, dude, he's literally that's the that's his guy. He's emulating them. That's his guy, yeah. That's how he got here, emulating him. Who well, who was your guy? Like when you finally got a chance to start in Notre Dame, who was your guy that you were like, yo, if I if I do this, I think I might emulate. Oh, I was 100 percent emulating Mike Vick and Drew Brees at the time. Mm. I always and Aaron Rodgers was my biggest one. I always used to get cussed out because I always refer to things that Aaron Rodgers would do. And I'm like, man, we should try that. <laughs> I mean, this is when he was winning the Super Bowl and all that. So I'm like, you know, at that time he was my Patrick Mahomes. And so I 
would always do like his type of footwork, watch his film, uh, try to talk to guys. And it, that's that's how I got to – it's all a small circle world thing. Yeah. I was really big on Aaron Rodgers, and at the time, we had Matt LaFleur. And I'm always talking to him about Aaron Rodgers. Oh, what would you do with Aaron Rodgers? He did this. Or, like, we should look at this Green Bay film. And he was never like – <laughs> as gung ho as I was, and then lo and behold, the next year he's his head coach. So it's just, it's a small world, man. <laughs> man. So yeah, I, you know what else? Somebody put something in the chat. Definitely that reverse left-handed reverse from the NBA Finals Game Two in '91 against the Lakers. Everybody tried that in Chicago. The next morning, everybody was out there like. That Jalen Green reverse was nice. But that up Man, up yeah, DeMar DeRozan might have to go on the uh, petty train for what he did to Jalen Yeah, what's, Green what's up night. with him? He did he elbow man. Dylan Brooks? <laughs> DeMar is frustrated, bro. Compton was on something yesterday. Him, Kendrick, Compton was just on something. Yeah, I mean, he really he really ran through Jalen Green. Then look at him like... Like, do something. <laughs> Left him, like, in the fetal position. Yeah, Jalen, you know, he ain't going to be tough enough to get up or nothing. He, gonna, he had him rolling on the ground. I'm like, good grief. And, you know, Dylan Brooks run, running up with that Canadian toughness. Oh, yeah, you're not, you're not getting far with that. He was like, man, you don't get off of me. Like, man, Debo syrup, hit that dude with the, with the maple syrup, man. You are stuck. Yeah. <laughs> He quick elbowed him too. Like I know you ain't even trying it. Don't even try man, it. Man, dude. Lucky Lucky Podcast, man. Sorry we had to leave you for two days, but like SD was was busy, man. I was in the bend. I had to hit left. Was like left must have forgot because he hit me last night. Like yo, what's wrong? You what's, what? I'm like fine, fam. I'm tired. <laughs> like, what you mean? I've been working in the bin for two straight days. I'm exhausted, but it was good, man. Lots of love. Congratulations to all the guys on their performances at the Pro Day. Congratulations once again to Notre Dame, support staff, coaches, everybody involved. You put on a great show. Greatly appreciate you. Notre Dame fans, be excited. Another practice report coming up next week. Wednesday, and uh, if you're not on Patreon, get on Patreon right now. Patreon.com forward slash Lucky Lefty Left for for Left. I'm SD2 Mike's man. Have a great Friday. We'll see you tomorrow. Marcus Freeman and see what he has to say about the next practice and big recruiting weekend. Well, he can't talk about recruits, but we'll see what he talks about tomorrow and discuss it with you right here. Lucky Lefty Podcast. But for Malik, have a great day. But most of all, make sure you continue to spin it differently.